Okay, so now let's have a quick demo of Spark. So this is the main Spark web page, spark.apache.org. Uh, and we are going to go in here to pick up the download link for Apache Spark. So I'm going to go with the latest version that's available. And the package that I'm going to use is the one that's already pre-built for Hadoop. So I'll just select one of those. And I can just select a direct download uh, link. Now, if you copy the link address, you can go into your own machine or your EC2 instance and go ahead and download the uh, package. So I'm going to do that right away. May take a few minutes. Okay, so the package is finished downloading, so I'm just going to go ahead and untar the uh, file. And it'll take uh, another few minutes. There are a couple of jar files, especially attached to Hadoop 2.6. So that's complete. Now we can just go into the uh, Spark folder. And uh, one of the first things we can use the um, Spark package uh, is basically you can, there are scripts in here that will allow you to um, launch a full Spark cluster using uh, purely the scripts that are just bundled with Spark. So if you go into the EC2 folder inside the Spark uh, uh, folder, you'll find a bunch of Spark EC2 scripts that you can use to deploy an, a full Spark cluster. Uh, for this to work, you're going to have to uh, create the environment variables that have your AWS credentials, as you may remember from previous videos. So you need the AWS access, uh, access key ID and the AWS secret access key. Both of these, you just need to create them as environment variables using the export command, uh, along with you know the actual contents of these keys. Uh, once this is available to Spark EC2, then it, it can be uh, used to contact AWS on your behalf and launch a full Spark cluster for you. Now, if you look into the files in this, uh, folder it's basically a python script that's going to uh, call all of the required functions for you and if you want you can open it up and it's basically uh, derived from the boto libraries so you could look at uh, some of the uh, things that are happening if you scroll down further you can actually see some of the default options that this uh, script does for example it by default launches an m1 large and the default region is US East 1, etc. So all of this stuff is, is available for you um, uh, to you. So let's just exit this script. Uh, another requirement is you need to have the key pair file ready for you. So that's one thing that we could do. We could just copy over the key pair files for use. Okay, so the basic way to use this uh, script and by the way, there should be a, a readme file that you have. You can keep a copy of your PEM file for uh, EC2 in the same directory just for convenience, or you can keep it somewhere in the path. Uh, that's up to you. So you need to specify the uh, name of the key pair with dash K after specifying spark dash EC2, which is the executable we are going to use. So I'm going to say 15619 uh, video.pem. Uh, actually, that's the name of the key pair. And then in the next uh, parameter we are using dash i, we are going to give the full name of the file, the number of slaves that you want to use. So that's dash s. And for this demo, I'm just going to have, say, two slaves. Remember that there would be a master node as well. Um, followed by the command launch. And then you want to give this a, a cluster name. So I'm just going to call this spark demo. And if you hit enter, yes, we have a error because of the um, PEM file permissions as usual. So I'm just going to go ahead and fix that up first. Okay, let's redo that command. So now it's creating the security groups for the master and slaves on our behalf. So the well-written script actually completely automated inside Boto. It's just it's just making all the AWS service calls, and uh, uh, it'll launch the clusters on your behalf. It'll see if they're uh, in the ready state, and then it'll actually log into each of each one of those clusters and download and install the software as required. So this process 
typically takes a few minutes so I'm just gonna wait for this to finish okay so the spark cluster has finished launching uh, just a few more um, aspects that I wanted to touch upon when you're launching the cluster uh, in the command line parameters for the launching script you can specify a spot price using the dash dash spot dash price equals to option uh, that will definitely save you a lot of money so that's highly recommended another thing is yes these uh, clusters use m1 large but if you're launching a small size cluster and if you're working with a lot of data then you might want to switch to something that has a lot of ram preferably in the r3 class so the r3 uh, ec2 instances typically work best with uh, spark because rdds are in memory and your cluster will benefit from having the extra memory so you can specify the instance type using the dash t option Okay, so um, also make sure you tag your instances the moment they are launched. The, the script is not going to tag them for you uh, automatically. So just go to the EC2 console and tag these instances uh, as soon as they are done. Okay, uh, now that the instances are launched, uh, now what we can do is you can connect to them using the same script. Uh, you just have to change the, um, the name of the command that you're using. So Spark EC2. Uh, using the same uh, key pair and key file instead of launch we're going to type in login uh, followed by the name of the cluster the reason you name the clusters so that if you have multiple uh, spark clusters running in your account you can identify which cluster you want to launch or log in or terminate so we're just going to go ahead and uh, go directly into the spark uh, master so now we have logged in to the uh, spark master node and um, the thing that you can do now is you want to check whether spark has been installed correctly so if you simply just ls uh, look at all of the files and uh, well if you go into spark bin uh, and uh, there is a script there called run example uh, you can run the spark pi example to just check if spark has been installed correctly and uh, the spark context and spark systems will be launched first so uh, the script finished running now if you just scroll up uh, and look through the actual contents of the logs you will find that um, here we go the job is finished it took about five seconds and uh, an answer was uh, uh, was given back to the console so um, so yeah so spark is co installed correctly and we were able to uh, you know successfully start the spark cluster one of the other things that you'll notice with the cluster that was launched on your behalf is uh, Hadoop is already pre-installed and in fact they have set up ephemeral and persistent HDFS and going by the Spark documentation uh, the ephemeral HDFS is the one that is used by default and uh, you will have to do some special configuration changes if you want to read and write stuff to persistent HDFS. So um, I'll demo a quick uh, program using the Spark shell. So one of the first things that we could do is we want to be able to um, copy some uh, input files into ephemeral HDFS. So I'm going to create a simple, uh, you know, text file. Or in fact, we could just use one of the uh, files from one of the directories, possibly a readme file. So. So readme.md seems like a big enough file that we can put into HDFS and run a sample program on. So, so first I'm going to go ahead and put um, a file. Uh, I'm going to create a directory in HDFS. So that's done. And then I'll go ahead and put the file into that directory. So this is readme.md to slash input. Okay, and uh, we'll just verify um, that we actually have the file sitting in HDFS. There you go, so that's been uploaded to HDFS. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and launch one of the Spark shells. And for this example, I'm going to go with the Scala shell. And you can also use the, the Python shell if, if you'd like. But I'm just gonna go with the, the Scala shell for now. 
So that's launched by just saying spark dash shell. Uh, after a few seconds, it should uh, start the actual shell service. Okay, let's start by defining our first RDD, which is uh, what we'll call the text file. And this is equal to uh, sc dot uh, text file. And we're just going to say input readme.md. Okay, now the next command that we're going to give is the actual word count uh, program. So I have a copy of that uh, command here, which is counts equals text file dot flat map. Uh, so we're splitting the uh, input file on uh, white space. Uh, followed by which we are doing a map of word to word comma one and then we are just reducing by key using the plus operator so this is a little bit of involved scalar again you can uh, look up the online reference for scalar in uh, spark or you can use the the python spark shell as well and let's uh, save that as a text file So one of the good things in Spark is you can also use the tab completion, which is quite useful. So let's finish that up. So if you'll notice, the actual execution happened only after I um, finished the final command, uh, which is outputting the RDD to disk. Now we can just go ahead and exit the scalar shell. And uh, what we can do is we can uh, use the ephemeral HDFS commands to uh, access the, um, the output file. So let's go ahead and go into bin Hadoop. And uh, we want to say the dfs ls slash output and let's go ahead and get that file In fact, that's uh, a folder. And um, we can actually take a look at the individual files in the folder. So as you can see, we've got uh, the word count application running correctly. Okay, um, I will put in a final word on uh, one of the other uh, things about Spark. So we looked at uh, how to use the Spark shell to launch uh, a program. Basically, you're typing in these individual commands one by one. But if you already have a full program written out, uh, you can actually, um, you can actually uh, use the Spark submit script. The Spark submit script can be used to um, you know, run any kind of uh, program. So this involves uh, you know, compiling your program uh, into a jar file and uh, providing that jar file into the Spark submit um, script. Okay, uh, and further information about that will be available below the video. Okay, the last thing that I wanted to cover was also how to uh, terminate the cluster once you're done. So um, we'll just exit out of the cluster. Now you can simply provide the Spark EC2 command called uh, destroy. This is going to terminate your cluster. Uh, you can also stop a cluster using this uh, command, uh, especially if it's not a um, spot instance. But um, remember that anything that's sitting in the um, ephemeral HDFS uh, will be wiped out during uh, stopping. So you may want to consider moving your data out or uh, using the um, persistent HDFS that Spark sets up. Okay, so I just uh, provide the destroy to the script 
and uh, it will just give you a quick warning saying that these are the exact instances that will be destroyed and if you just say yes it will just go ahead and provide the uh, AWS those uh, the service calls to terminate all of those instances.